Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thorne. Today I'm celebrating the release of my new updated personality test. And the new test, the new personality test involves UI design changes that have made the test a lot more clean and a lot more easy to take. It's more fun, the results are more clear and easy to read, and questions have been improved considerably. So I really recommend trying out my new test at ericthor.com slash test slash personality minus test or just ericthor.com, you'll find a way. I, I believe in you. So I often get people who ask me about good and bad personality tests. How do you know if you're taking a good or a bad personality test? What is a good personality test and what is a bad personality test? What can you do if you get different personality test results on different tests? How can you know if you're an INFP on one test or an ENFJ on the other? What can you do to tell the difference and how can you know which personality test is right and which one is wrong? So today we'll talk about how to tell the difference between good and bad personality tests and what you can do to maximize the efficiency of your personality test results. So the difference between good and bad personality tests. I've found that bad personality tests can be very superficial. A lot of the time they will focus on how you appear to be rather than what you are. So instead of asking you interesting questions about your thought patterns, your beliefs, your values, it will focus on whether you are intelligent, whether you are good looking, whether you're popular, whether you have many friends, whether you are shy, and whether you are somebody uh, people like or not. And uh, all those questions, while maybe interesting, are highly superficial because we tend to answer these questions based on our appearance. So if you notice that the questions that you are being asked when you are taking a personal test are superficial, that's already a bad sign, then you're already off the bad start. Good personality tests are thought provoking. That means already when answering questions, you should be thinking, wow, that's interesting. I have not thought about myself that way. That's a good question. I have not thought about myself that way. Yeah, I don't know whether I'm more this or that. This is interesting. I've never thought of if I'm more this or that. I've never uh, reflected on who I am in this way. A good personality test should make you ask yourself questions about yourself to drive self-awareness, introspection, and personal growth. Already when seeing the questions, you should feel you are learning something. Now, another thing about bad personality tests is bad personality tests don't show you their data. So bad personality tests don't tell you how their questions work. Bad personality tests don't show you the statistics, the average result, how people are in average performing, how people in average result respond to different questions. That means they don't know if a test is or a question is good or not. They are not gathering any data and they're not looking into or thinking about actively whether a question is working or not. They're just writing things down. Uh, they're just taking things. Oh, that maybe that question could work. Maybe that question could work. Oh, I'll just try this one. And they're not even thinking about or looking at if people are actually interpreting the question correctly and whether the question is performing well statistically. So when you make a test, you need to look at each question for each personality type. And you have to look, how is this personality type in average responding to this question? Is this question a good one or not? Do I have statistics, data, metrics to prove that it's a good question? So good personality tests will already be showing you their statistics. They'll show you a graph. They'll say, say, this is how many people have taken the test. This is the average result. This is how many people got that type. This is how many people got that type. And uh, they they will be looking at statistics because they believe in data driven personality tests and data driven personality tests are superior to subjective guesswork personality tests. Another thing is bad personality tests don't make an effort to teach you how different personality types are actually different. That means when you take a bad personality test and you get your personality result you get kind of this astrological personality test description that could apply to almost anyone. What they are saying about your personality type is general, stereotypical, shallow, and often irrelevant. A lot of the time they will mention things about you that are completely irrelevant to your character, your beliefs, your values, and what's really important to you. 
a good personality test will try to educate you and say, this type is better at that than your type. This type tends to do better in this situation than your type. You tend to be better in that situation. You tend to have these values and those types tend to have that value system. And so they will already be introducing you and helping you understand the different types. And in that way, they will be giving you the keys to verify your results. I want to, people to start thinking critically and I want people to look at the data they are being presented with when they are giving a personality description, when, they, when you get a personality result, when you get the INFJ and you read the description, no matter if you agree with it or not, is this a good description? Does this description actually say something meaningful about INFJs? Does it actually say something meaningful about me or who I am? I would also say good personality tests already clear up ambiguity. So if you are feeling a bit lost on the difference between feeling and thinking, this test should already be saying feeling is clearly this, thinking is clearly that. And so they will already be helping you make a clear judgment. Oh, you're definitely this type because you have that cognitive function very strongly. If a personality test is already showing you evidence to support its conclusions, its results, that's a good sign, that's a good personality test. Finally, let's talk about good and bad personality test takers. Okay, I know you guys think you're perfect and I know it's only the test that's wrong. It's only the test that can be wrong. It cannot be me, it's only the test. I am definitely the, this type. They definitely got my type wrong. When taking a test, you need to be a bit lenient. You need to work together with the personnel test. You need to use the personnel test like you use a search function. If you use Google, you need to know to use the right keywords. When you take a personnel test, you need to know to take and use the right approach. The first thing you need to look at is your general mood and mental state. If you are positive about yourself, if you are relaxed, if you are calm, if you are in a state of flow or if you are close to a state of flow, feeling meaningful, passionate, purposeful, curious, you're going to get a better result than if you are tired, bored, drained, dispassionate, critical of yourself, stressed, uh, chaotic, anxious, scattered, angry about something. Your mood is going to be your biggest downfall when taking a personal test because it's going to set you back. It's going to trick your mind. It's going to make you go lazy when answering questions. It's gonna make you vote more negative on every statement than you would on average. I would also say a good personality test taker is honest both about their strengths and weaknesses. So when taking a personality test, you should be doing your best effort to select strongly agree or strongly disagree on each question. If possible, try to give some clear statements, at least 25% clear statements. 25% strongly agree, 25% strongly disagree, and the rest can be in the middle or somewhere in the middle. Allow yourself to have some statements that you really agree with and some that you really disagree with. And be genuinely honest. Try to be honest. I prefer this over that. I like this over that. I'm better at this than that. Because that's how people are. There is no genuinely perfect 100% person that is gonna say strongly agree on everything. And there is no generally incompetent person out there that's gonna say, no, I suck at everything. There is no person that hates and struggles with and finds everything boring and tedious. There is no person that loves and enjoys and does everything with passion all time, every day. These kind of people don't exist, and if they do exist, they belong in the lunatic asylum. Finally, good test takers try to make their questions clear. They try to avoid ambiguity. They won't try to make rapid or crazy associations to uh, distort every question. They will try to take every question as it is. They will try to go with the simplest answer. If there is a question about something, don't make it too complicated for yourself. Don't make it too, oh yeah, in that situation, if um, uh, when I'm with some other friends, so one year ago, I really enjoyed it. So yes, <laughs> instead try to go just with the simplest answer. Do I enjoy it? Do I not enjoy it? That's my tip for you guys. I hope this video will help you to better personal test results. And if that isn't gonna work for you, 
work with introspection, work with coaching, seek the help of professionals, and work with people in the community to help you develop a higher self-awareness. Research the dichotomies, research the tests, research uh, the cognitive functions, and you will eventually figure out your way. I promise you that. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video.